Hey guys, I'm Aaron with Alien Knives. Welcome back to my shop. Today I'm going to show you my favorite tool in the shop that helps reduce my hand sanding time. I'm a knife maker. I do not love to hand sand. It is something that I find some therapeutic value in, but I don't love it. So I found a method that really reduces the amount of time that it takes me to hand sand my knives, and I'm going to show it to you today. Do you love to hand sand when you're making knives? Neither do I. So we're going to take this time to show you how to use the disc sander and why it's so important in the shop. I absolutely love my disc sander. I use my 2x72 to do the majority of the work, but when it comes down to the finer details, you just can't beat a good disc. And I'm going to show you how I use mine and why I use it, and at the end of the video, I think you'll go and get one. Throw on my man print, my man apron, protects me from getting all dirty. Alrighty, so we're gonna go to the disc sander. I don't feel like doing all this hand sanding. You can see I've got some problem spots here that showed up immediately when I started sanding this direction. You know, it would take forever to get that out hand sanding. So I'm gonna jump over to the disc sander with these and clean these up on the disc. So this is my disc sander setup. It's a variable speed motor, three phase, with a VFD. I'm using a Tico FM50, super easy to set up and program. I'm running this on 220 because it is a two horsepower motor and I wanted to use all two horsepower. I didn't want it to dog down. I put a one degree beveled disc on the front of it. You can get a flat disc or a beveled disc. Here. On a one degree bevel, when you're sanding a large knife and you sand up, see how it doesn't touch the other side? Since it's a one degree bevel, your blade doesn't touch this side. And since this spins, if it were perfectly flat and you came across, as soon as the tip of the knife touched the other side, it would buck your knife. So I do a one degree bevel. I bought mine from Beaumont Metalworks. It was very inexpensive for what it is, and it fits the shaft of almost any motor that you buy. So you can run your stock right across the center without it touching the other side. One degree bevel is pretty awesome. Please excuse the mess. This is my grinding station. I've got my 2x72 over here and all of its attachments with all my belts up here, and I grind a ton of stuff here. I got my disc sander in the middle, and I've got my horizontal sander right here. So there's an incredible amount of dust over here, not to mention I've got my bandsaw right there. So this is the dusty area of my shop. Pretty much no matter any time this is covered in dust, even though I do clean it regularly. So here's what you do. When you get your disc, you're gonna get it and it's gonna be brand new with nothing on it. So you buy this 3M feathering compound. And this stuff is really cool. It's super easy to use. You cut the tip off, you start squeezing, and you turn your disc on, and you just go till it's on. Peel off your old paper. And the feathering compound allows you to stick pieces of paper on multiple times. So the feathering compound stayed on the disc so that now I could take a new sheet of paper and stick it right to it. So I just come in here and I stick my new sheet on just like that. Now I like to use a nine inch disc that allows me to use standard sheets of paper. And the cool part about being able to use standard sheets of paper is that you can use any grit of paper that you want to. You're not reduced to the standard, you know, 60 grit pieces that you get for your six inch disc or your 10 inch disc. You can use 220 or 500. You can even take this all the way up to a thousand grit. Now, you see that this, this is the leftover. I'll cut this into a strip and I'll use this and I'll also use these little pieces here when I go to do like finer uh, handle sanding and things like that. So I never, never discard this. I always use every little piece. So there you go. That's as easy as it is to get your paper on there. I mean. That's pretty darned easy right there. Now let me show you how I use it and why. Okay guys, this blade right here is just off the 2x72. And you can see 
my grinding lines. Okay, now I took that to 220 grit on the 2x72, but you'll see the difference. When I put this on the flat disc, it's going to grind a flat right across this and we're going to it'll instantly show me the valleys and peaks and my mistakes that I made on the 2x72. Hear how quiet that is? This is one of the reasons that I love using the disc sander. It's so quiet and peaceful to clean up your blades on this. Now, if I would have walked over to my hand sanding sled right now, I would have probably spent about an hour hand sanding this side just to get these vertical scratches out of the blade. Okay, here we go. I'm going to turn this off and we'll inspect this. Now, I just spent one second over there. And what you're going to see immediately are the mistakes. So this is the flat that just got sanded. There's a mistake here, right there. Well, it's not a mistake. It just needs to be fixed. You can see here, actually, no, let me clean this up. Okay, so you can immediately see where we have problem spots. See, I've got a problem spot right there. And what that tells me is that while I was on the 2x72 and I was grinding across, I rocked the blade just a little bit because this is my flat, but it took a little bit off there. So what I'm going to do on the disc is I'm going to sand this flat until that blends in. Almost there. See, I've got a little bit of a dip there. Now, what I do is I apply pressure with this hand. Don't put any pressure with this hand because if you pressurize this side, if you push against this side, it'll dig into the edge of your disc and it'll cause gouges. This hand is doing nothing but moving the blade in and out and supporting it. This hand with these two knuckles is where I'm applying the pressure to the blade. And if my problem spot's here, I'll put a knuckle out here towards the tip of my thumb here, and I'll work this area on the flat spot of the disc. Just like that. Uh, there's no rotation happening with my right hand. I'm not pushing towards the tip or towards the spine. It's all just pushing against the flat right here. And it's coming out of there real fast. So now you can see I've got just a little bit more here, and then the tip just needs to be cleaned up. Also, don't be afraid to run the disc right up against your file guide to get this inside ricasso. This is a really hard area to, to get sanded out, so I like to do it on the disc, and I'll run the disc right up to it, and run the disc up and down, because you've got one point on the disc right here at its furthest, um, at the furthest point of the diameter of the disc where it focuses its grind. So you'll see right there I'm doing the, the cutting edge and right there I'm doing the back, right there. And I just take it up and down to clean up that inside ricasso. See, it's perfectly clean now. Okay, let's just clean this up. Done, perfect. There we go. How, how smooth and clean is that? Now when I go over to hand sand this, it'll be a breeze. I'll jump right to, I'll, I'll still use 220, and I'll sand it this direction, just to go ahead and speed things up. Once I sand it this way, and I'm at 220 and I'm happy with it, I'll switch to 500 and sand at an angle until I'm happy with it, and then I'll take the 500 and I'll put in my sanding marks lengthwise. But that's pretty good. And it would it take me about a minute, you know, if I wasn't, videoing this. It took me a minute to do this. It does blow a whole sheet of paper to do each side of a knife. So you're looking two extra sheets of paper, but think about all the time you're saving. And time is worth money. So my disc sander has been out of service for a while because I've been lazy. When I say lazy, I mean lazy because this is all you got to do to bring it back into service. Change out paper. 
put a little feathering compound on there, and stick a new sheet on, trim it. You do want to trim it as close to the disc as you can. There you go. Done and done. I save all these and I do use these. I use all of these little pieces of sandpaper. Safety glasses. Direction we're spinning here. Oh, that happens to be perfect. I'm straddling the camera leg to get in here, but ouch. See? <laughs> it's hard to do it when you got a camera in your way. The way I do this is I put pressure with my fingers, with my knuckle and my thumb. You don't want to push with your left hand, with my left hand here, because that'll cause a gouge in the blade on the edge of the disc. This hand is just supporting the handle of the knife and I'm doing all the pressing with my finger and my knuckle against the grinding wheel. And also I can feel any heat building up. Now see I can see a spot right here where I got a little bit of trouble on my 2x72 that I'm going to have to grind out of there. Dip it in water, come back. Yeah, you can see that spot right there. It's just this spot where I got a little crazy on my 2x72. it by about half. We'll go in again. We'll sand out, sand that out some more. It looks like I got a little spot down here too. So I must have a high spot right here because I got a spot here and a spot here that I'm not quite getting sanded yet. I think this uh, paper's toast. Let me get a new piece. Yeah, that paper's toast already. Grab a new sheet. That is the thing about a disc sander. It burns through paper, but if you don't like hand sanding, whoa. This is the ticket. It just really cleans things up fast. There we go. Take my scraps. And we're ready to rock. Back in business. First time you touch it, it could bite, so be careful. That paper was shot. This is gonna clean up real fast now. All right, I think we're there. See, I did, oh, got a little tiny spot right there. But other than that, I think I got every single one of the uh, two by 72 scratches out. That's what I cared about.
That's just beautiful. Man, that's gonna make hand sanding just a breeze. I got two knives done. There's that much water on the floor. Now, think about it. If there's that much water on the floor, this is a disc that's spinning and it's flinging water off in all directions. So it's pretty imperative that you wear safety glasses when you're working with this guy right here. But I just did two entire knives. I used four sheets of paper and there's about that much water because I consistently dip in my water before I bring it back because this is effectively wet sanding in this station. You are wet sanding. This is wet dry paper that I'm sticking on there and I'm dipping it in water. I'm keeping it really wet. And it's more like you could almost do lapidary work on this thing right here. It's amazing. You guys should definitely go out and get a disc sander. I'll bet you Brian over at Houseworks, you know, the guy who does the revolution, the do-it-yourself 2x72, I'll bet you someday he'll build a cool DIY uh, work surface for the disc sander. At least, if he's not making plans for it, he should. Wink, wink. I hope you hear me, Brian. All right, so we have a long, medium, and small on the long Man, I just can't express to you how light these are. I mean, these are like these these are just like featherweight knives. I used a hybrid C-Tech material, which is a honeycomb material, and this is kind of a, a greenish color with an elm burl. Really neat burl. I'm gonna bring you up close to show you these also, each one of them. This one right here has a sharpened clip. It has mammoth bark, which is the outer layer of mammoth and a really neat stabilized maple handle with a, a really cool knot that goes right through from one side to the other on the book matched scales. So that one came out really cool. And this one is really neat. I love this knife. I love how it fits in the hand. This is Fordite. Let's bring you up real close and show that to you. 